Okay. For those of you watching online, the reason why I'm sitting is because I tried out for Real Madrid, a soccer team. I literally went to the stadium, by the way. I was blessed to go there. But I was trying out with preschoolers, <laughs> soccer. And I injured my leg doing a back kick and uh, tore my hamstring quite badly. So I've been out of action for about a week now. And uh, so I'm just, that's why I'm sitting and preaching. And uh, so the church knows that. Say this with me, guys. Say 3 John 2. I know it sounds funny, but that's the title of my message. And, you know, some of the stuff I'm going to share this morning briefly, a lot of you know already, but sometimes, uh, in fact, Jesus, Peter, and Paul, all three on different occasions said that we need to be reminded of certain things because we tend to forget. There's a scripture to men that says, now, do not be negligent, you know, and uh, the Bible says, take heed to, to the things you have learned, lest at any time you let them fall. And uh, so I'm going to just share some basic promises, and particularly from uh, our key scripture is 3 John verse 2. That's why I've called it 3 John 2. And a lot of people don't know one of the things particularly about this scripture is that it says, Beloved, I pray, 3 John verse 2, that uh, Beloved, I pray. Oh, I like it. It starts off with the word beloved. You've got to understand when the Bible calls us the beloved of God. In fact, let me just do something quickly. This is the beauty of technology. I just feel to do something quickly. And this will only take a... A moment. The word beloved is mentioned 104 times in the scriptures or, or the, the mic. In, in the New Testament, the word beloved is mentioned 60 over 60 times. And when God says that you're his beloved, basically, well, let me let me look what it means in this particular verse. Give me one second. Uh, I like to do this from time to time. So give me a second just to go to the original meaning of the word beloved. And it's interesting, the, the introduction to the, the third epistle of John, it says the elder unto the well-beloved Gaius. Uh, uh, that means esteemed, dear, favored, worthy of love. God has made us to be worthy of his love through us accepting Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. And the word beloved in verse 2 is exactly the same. It says, dearly beloved, dearly loved, esteemed, dear. When something is dear to you, that means you treasure it. You know, you think of something that's very dear to you. I have, just for uh, in an example of well, you know, things that are precious to you are dear. So God calls us his dear. <laughs> hey, turn to someone and say, you are dear, you are the dear of God. You know, when you write a letter, dear Sansa, it's actually one of the highest forms of greeting of friendship. In fact, the word dear uh, speaks of covenant. You're close. You, you're valuable. I treasure you. And so, yeah, this scripture opens up with the word beloved. So God wants us to know from the beginning who we are to him. That's how we should treat one another as well, by the way. We are the beloved of the Lord because we, are, we have been made worthy of his love. Remember Jesus prayed in John 17 verse 23 and he said, Father, show them that you love them as much as you love me. And Ephesians 1 verse 6, I've said it before, I don't know if it comes up in this, in, in the lesson here but, or the teaching where it's, it says we've been accepted in the beloved eternally. Can you imagine that forever and ever we, I always like to say this, we are the target of his love. We are the target of his affection. 
we are God's bullseye that he focuses his attention on. And God is not an, an adulterer. He doesn't love other religions more than he loves his own people. He doesn't commit adultery on us. He doesn't bless other religions and, and, and bless us the same. And in this way to understand it, and you've always got to remember the statement. I say it often, where I learned this from uh, Bishop Bill Hammond, that if God is merciful to me, he has to be merciless to my enemies. You've got to get a revelation of that, guys. God is merciless to sickness. God is merciless to poverty. God is merciless to fear, to rejection, to inadequacies, feelings of inadequacies, inferiority, complexes, depression, oppression, suppression, discouragement. God is, a, is, a, is merciless to those if we allow him to be merciless through us. Because we, remember, you've got to give God permission. To have a scripture like this operate in your life, I'll show you now, uh, where a lot of people don't know just one portion of the scripture. They quote it often, but there's one little key uh, verse that you need, a phrase or word, it's actually one word, I think, that you need to be aware of for this scripture to be operational in, in your life. You've got to give God permission. Even as a Christian, the blessings and the promises of God will not come automatic into your life. You've got to get a revelation of that, guys. It comes by giving God permission on a day-to-day -day basis, moment by moment. And I say it this way, by every act of obedience, you give God permission. I give God permission to bless me, to forgive me, to uplift me, to protect me, to encourage me, to provide for me. It has to be by consent. God will never impose himself on you, even as a believer. How do you give God permission? By faith. You just, you have to believe God loves you. And, and you know where we battle with this? Because we don't love ourselves. The devil is the biggest condemnation accusing preacher. He's a very good evangelist of, of lies. He tells you you're not worthy. That's all you got to get back to. What does the, what does the covenant say? You might, you might hear a voice in your inner mind say you're not worthy. But what does the covenant say? We've been made worthy by the blood of the Lamb. We've been accepted in the beloved. We have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If God be for me, who can be against me? You've got to always, that's why it's important to know the scriptures, guys. You've got to know the scripture. So look at this here. So let's get back to this. Beloved. I pray or wish you may prosper in all things. How many things? Every area of your life. I got a revelation of that once where the Lord said, in every area of your life, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will supply all your needs according to my riches in glory by Christ Jesus in every area of your life. Every area. So if there's an area that you know is lacking, get God involved in there. Get him involved, even if it seems impossible. And one of the things that seems impossible sometimes is when you're in debt financially. You don't know how you're going to get out of this. Or when a, a sickness attacks you. Gosh, if you saw what my leg looked like, you would think I'd never recover because it was purple the whole way down. From, from my groin right down. Purple. Like like dark purple. I've got photos of it. It looks very ugly. <laughs> and I was battling to walk. I mean, on, I don't know if Pastor Debbie told you, uh, my first, our first day in Malta, I injured myself, you know, and uh, doing a simple little back kick, you know, I was doing a few, and then I did a hard one, and boy, it felt like somebody hit me at the back with a baseball bat. And uh, I, I couldn't walk properly from that time. And every airplane I caught after then, uh, it's the first time I've experienced that I had to be wheelchaired in it. It felt weird for me to be in a wheelchair. But I had to. The, the, the walk was too long. And uh, so, so sometimes God does that for us. And just because I was incapacitated, you could say, for a, 
a few maybe weeks it's going to be i don't know it doesn't mean to say there's something wrong with me because my body is injured so this is temporal so many times we go through circumstances situations it's temporal that's what the bible says call those things that are not just as though they were you, if faith is the is the ingredient to give god permission into every area of your life so that the peace from the prince of peace can come into your life nothing missing nothing broken everything supplied everything supplied beloved i wish or pray above all things that you may prosper and be in health just as your soul prospers or, or according to how your soul prospers that's what the word just as means according to how your your soul is your mind that's why the scripture says you won't it won't be automatic that you'll prosper and be in health automatically the bible says according to how your soul prospers your soul is your mind your will your intellect your emotions it's the place where you get educated first. You get revelation of God's word down in your spirit, man. But you have to, first of all, educate your soul, your mind. Your soul is your personality and all that, but it's where your intellect, where your knowledge is. Uh, that's why you can, you can be an educated fool. <laughs> Scripture says it. Yes, Israel and I are watching something... Uh, it, it, it's a program on Netflix, I think, called Your Planet. Oh, Ben, the graphics are mind-blowing. But it starts off like a few billion, and I'm going to do this, a few billion years ago. And these guys talk of, of the billions and millions of years, and they show graphics, and they show what happened between this. And it's all based on a line. They keep using the word, and it's Morgan Freeman's voice. And it sounds so convincing because it's Morgan Freeman's voice and he talks slow and the graphics are profound. Eventually I had to turn it off because it's just a lie. And there's a scripture in Romans, that's why you've got to be careful what you attach yourself to, what knowledge you believe. Because the scripture says in Thessalonians, if you believe a lie, you'll go down with it. Jonah 2 verse 8 says, if you observe a lying vanity, you forsake your own. Here we go, mercy. And so uh, evolution is based on a lie. Uh, and gosh, so eventually we, we had to turn it away. So you've got to listen to this. The Bible tells you that you've got to educate your soul. It says be renewed in the spirit of your mind, the very core of your, your will, your motion, and your intellect. You've got to be renewed there. There's only one way to renew. It's through the scripture. I know I haven't been posting the devotions. I might even stop that, to be honest with you, because uh, I will send out a message why. Uh, I just uh, thought about it. We'll carry on reading through the Bible. But, um, yeah, I won't say it publicly uh, on TV uh, when it comes out. So, say 3 John 2. God wants us to prosper. God wants us to uh, you don't have to repeat things. He wants us to be in health, which includes all other things, but it's equal or according to how I educate my mind. So that is God's will for you. Remember, God's will is expressed through His Word. I have to say that over and over. You want to know the will of God? I'm astounded by Christians who say, uh, especially as prophets, they come to us and they say, please tell me God's will for my life. I pull out the Bible and I say, here it is. The chief will of God for you is, yeah, prophecy is just bonus. In fact, if you never got a prophecy in your whole life, you going by the written word will, will please God for the rest of your life. And God will lead you according to Psalm 23. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not lack. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Beside the still waters, watch this. He, he leads me. In the right paths for his namesake. That means to uphold his reputation. So God has a reputation to uphold. That when we are following him through the word. That's how you follow the shepherd. You follow the word of the shepherd. That's what Jesus said. My sheep know my voice. They won't hear a stranger's voice. So the only way to follow Jesus 
is to follow the scriptures. Just do what the scriptures say on a daily basis. Back to what I always say, guys, the basics of the faith. Stick with that and you'll never go wrong. Keep reading the Bible and then, then do whatever the word says. You can't go wrong. And you got to understand this. God is not a, a respect of persons. He doesn't have personal favorites, but he favors those who favor his word. Righteousness exhausts. doesn't matter who you are. You're looking at a person who just by pure faith and obedience had in the last 50 years of my life to my the best of my ability, not always maybe the best, sometimes I blew it, is to obey God's word. And God's word has put me in the place where I am today. God's word has elevated me above poverty, sickness and death. Because there's power in the word. It's supernatural. It's a, God's word it preserves you. So that's so find out what the will of God is for you through the word of God. That's why you gotta keep reading your word. You gotta keep your head and your heart in the book. You can't take your eyes off Jesus for one minute, looking unto Jesus way through the word for the tithes and offering. Just to repeat myself, guys, time for tithes and offering. You know what the scripture says in Malachi chapter 3. God says that one of the ways that you show you've returned to Him and you're following Him is that you bring all the tithes and all the offerings into the storehouse, the local church, that there may be meat in my house so that you and your house can have the meat of every provision that God has and what you need for you. Never forget that. And remember, God is not mocked at what we sow. What happens? He will reap. You know, even even if uh, people teach that they don't believe in tithing anymore, well, they're doing people an injustice by not at least encouraging them to bring at 10% of their income and plus because they're robbing people of the blessings of God that make rich and adds no sorrow. Let me pray of your tithes and offering. And those of you giving online, you will see uh, right now coming on the screen, ways you can give locally and internationally and we encourage you if you do not have a church to that you go to but you're watching us tithe to this ministry because God blesses the tither and the giver a sevenfold promise according to Malachi chapter 3 from verses 8 to 10 Father in the name of Jesus I release the covenant blessing of you the great I am in fact I, again I don't have to even pray this it's automatic that you will rebuke the devourer. You will open the windows of heaven. You will bless us. You will make us above only not beneath. You will cause the blessings to overtake us. You will cause more blessings and even is written in Malachi 3, Father, because of the fullness of the counsel of your word of what you will do to provide for us. You will crush Satan shortly under our feet. Lord, because of the tithes and the offering. Father, we thank you. It's a weapon. It's not an insurance policy. Once the calamity has taken place, no, it's as it were a preventative policy. Before calamity strikes, you will be there to uh, avoid the, the devil coming against us. And we thank you for this, Father, in Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen. Bless you. Author and finish of your faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's why I'm such a stickler. Keep showing you the Bible. So who's the thief and who's the giver? Remember our key scripture is God wants to prosper you and, and cause you to be in health. Because health helps you to prosper. A sick person can't work very well. Come on. Those of you who've been very sick, you can't work very well. If you if you like uh, got COVID or flu or AIDS or or cancer or something that that is robbing you of breath and and strength, you can't concentrate properly. If you got dementia, how are you going to work with dementia? You hear what I'm saying? So you, your health is vital, and remember, your body does not belong to you or I. My body doesn't belong to me. Your body don't belong to you as a believer. It's the temple of who? The Holy Spirit. It's his house. How are you taking care of his house so that he can also take care of, of your house? He's the caretaker of this house, but we got to cooperate with him. 
on a daily basis. So ask yourself again, who's the thief? Who's the giver? Well, Jesus clarifies it. Remember John 10 verse 10, the thief comes not except for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's the thief, the devil. Jesus said, I think it's Matthew 8, 44. He, he clarifies who the devil is. He says, from the beginning, he was a liar and a murderer. And there's no truth in him. Jesus, the giver, says, I have come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Say more abundantly. That's the promise of 3 John 2. Uh, well, I've been saying it, but here's some more scriptures. His will is his word. So here's some more scriptures to understand when I keep saying God's word is his will or, and his will is his word. Hebrews 8 verse 6. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry in as much he is also a the, also mediator of a better covenant or superior covenant which was established on better or superior promises so the new testament is is superior to the old testament in its promises for us then then it carries on hebrews 9 verse 16 for where there is a testament a testament is actually a will new testament old testament the word testament means someone's will the old testament was god's will for that dispensation of time then jesus comes in and he introduces a new will i don't know if any of you uh, do this but you should you should always update your will if you've got children and if you've got something that you can leave behind you need to keep updating it because things might change you might get extra possessions that you or something you know whatever and so God updated his will for mankind <laughs> when Jesus came. The living word was the will. So for watch this now, Hebrews 9, 16. For where there is a testament or a will, there must also of necess necessity be the death of the testator. A testator is uh, one who, whose wishes must happen to his possessions after his death or her death. That's what a testator is. Jesus was the testator on our behalf. He came and he gave us his will. He wrote out his will. And, and funny enough, it was, it was the will. Jesus was the will of God the Father, God the Son, and himself and the church. How's that, eh? How's that for a will? So God's will is his word. In the beginning was the word or the will of God. And the word or the will of God became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory as that of the only begotten of the Father. And I'm jumping in and it says that whoever believes in the word or the will of God shall not perish but have everlasting life. <laughs> Every time you see the word will, superimpose the, sorry, the word word or the, every time you see, read the word of God, superimpose the word will. They mean the same thing. They go hand in hand. You can't separate them like left and right hand, left and right eye, left and right nostril, <laughs> top and bottom lip, top teeth, bottom teeth, left foot, right foot. They go, they go hand in hand. God's will is his word and God's word is his will. Then Luke 11 verse 2. This is what we should be praying in faith, boldness and authority. Coming boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find help in the time of need. In Hebrew, Luke 11 verse 2 is, is part of the disciples prayer. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I pray it this way. When I come to that part, I say, Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven in my life. And obviously, whoever I affect in Jesus' name. John 17, verses 17 and 18. This is part of Jesus' prayer. Remember, his will is his word. We're talking about it. I'm giving you more scriptures for it. He's praying to sanctify them by your truth. And remember, 
Jesus said, if you, uh, I think it's John 8.32, I think it's 8.32, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Because truth is unchangeable. Truth is God's covenant to us. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Now, this is a book of freedom. If you, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free from poverty, sickness, and death. 3 John 2. <laughs> Say that with me again. Say 3 John 2. Never forget that little phrase. That's, that, that's an anchor for you to remember. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have also sent them. And remember, the word never changes. Jesus never changes. John 8 verse, uh, uh, sorry, Hebrews 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the living word. The word doesn't change. And I heard a preacher once say this, that when you're reading through the Bible and you see anything that God has done for anyone, it means it's available to you too. Otherwise, God wouldn't have put it in the word. It wasn't only for that person. It was written what happened to that person. But if you in the same situation as that person was, then that promises for you too. Because all scripture is given. That the end result is when we may be thoroughly finished unto all good works. And you know what? Health is a good work. <laughs> oh my goodness. Are you getting something? Okay, and this is just reminding talkers. Satan never changes. Never forget that. John 8 verse 44, I quoted it just now. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and he says, You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. We saw that when we were now uh, in all the three countries we were in. Doha, Spain and Malta. Religious spirits like you can't believe. It. It's just like, it's like it almost sickens you to see how People are bound by religion, which is lies. Remember, all religion is all lies in comparison to Christianity. What's the scripture for that? One scripture, John 14, verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no, no man, rich, poor, black, white, pink, purple, yellow, can come to the Father except by me. So, Satan never changes. Well, speaking on that, God's word and his personal promises never change because he does not change. You've got to, you've got to remember these things, guys, because it helps. You know, the scriptures like this don't help when, when everything's going good. You, 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 I always say this, when things are going well, enforce, keep that ball rolling. Don't slack when things are going good. You know, uh, there's a saying in, uh, uh, what's it? Uh, a, a rolling stone gathers no moss. What is moss? Moss is mold. It's, it's a form of corruption. It's a form of, of, of disease. Moss is a, a kind of a disease with water stagnant. But if you keep rolling a stone, it won't get that moss on it. We are living stones built into a holy temple. Living epistles read of men. Keep the ball rolling. <laughs> Just won the Rugby World Cup yesterday as I'm talking. You know, by, by the skin of our teeth, the last three games, wine, 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 you know. And uh, it, it, it's interesting. I, quote, I, put, I put a scripture up on um, Facebook this morning that I felt to put up because when you look at the statistics, of the, the All Blacks compared to us, they should have won hands down. They had more territory, more this, more that, more game for them. Even though they had a red card, they played better in a sense than us. 
But there's a scripture in Ecclesiastes 9.1.1. I said 9.1.1, which says the race is not to the swift or the strength to the strong. But, you know, and the, the scripture carries on. I, I failed to put that scripture up on Facebook this morning with other scriptures, you know. And uh, if you look at Colise, he had Jesus written on his armband, you know. I mean, that speaks loud and clear. And Pastor Davy put on Facebook, uh, prayer prevails over voodooism because that haka is invoking demons. Hey, I mean, you, I don't know if you see, they put that demon look and that thing like that. Hey, while they were doing that, I was binding devils. I was, I was literally taking all those words that they were saying, because I don't know what they are, but they curse words. And I was pulling them down to the obedience of Christ. I was doing that. And I was placing a bloodline of Christ, because I've got authority to do that, man. If I say it, it's, it's so. I'm a child of God. I have permission. And I placed the bloodline of Christ around those words, and I decreed they will... Uh, no weapon formed against our box will prosper. Every word that is risen up against them in judgment are condemned to the obedience of Christ. Again, the, the, they should have won. But you know what? Throw your Buddhism at us. We'll throw our God at you and we'll see who wins. We won by the favor of God, by the mercy of God. And Colisi is a full-on, strong, dedicated believer. And as the head is, so is the body. <laughs> and, they, and most of those guys are believers. So come on, you want to come and throw your chokos around? We'll throw our God at you, boy. You know, and we'll see who comes out best. And uh, so you've got to understand that because God doesn't change, we are, we are not consumed. That's what Malachi 3 verse 6 says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Psalm 119, verse 89 to 91. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in the heavens. In heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You establish the earth and it abides. Verse 91. They continue this day according to your ordinances. It reminds me of that scripture, I think it's Hebrews 11.3, that says all things are upheld by the word of his power. Not the power of his word, by the way, the word of his power. God's power is expressed through his word. That's why it's important to speak God's word. Let the power flow. Turn to your neighbor and say, release the power. Open your mouth. That's what the scripture in Psalms says, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. What is God saying? Put together the other scriptures. Open your mouth with confessions of faith. Decree the decree of the Lord. Decree whatever you decree will be established unto you. It's supernatural. That's why you, you've got to have a believing heart that when you say God's word, it's going to happen. Sooner or later, it's going to happen. Gosh, man. I heard one of the statements they made there that um, greatness is not reserved for the timid. It was one of the Springbok coaches that said that in the interview yesterday. Greatness, let me say it again, is not reserved for the timid or the fearful or the unbelieving. You want, you want God's greatness in your life? It's reserved for you and I, but if you go along the pathway of godliness and by the way the bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion so you need to be bold when it comes to prayer when it comes to faith remember i've said it before bold thinking bold believing bold speaking will give you a bold uh, manifestation <laughs> come on what do you lack in your life start thinking what the word says, start believing it, start saying it, and sooner or later you'll be driving in your bold new car, having your bold new house, having a bold a miracle of salvation and conversion with one of your family members. You've got to live a lifestyle of boldness. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a disciplined mind. Discipline your mind to stay in boldness. Whenever there's hesitation, because remember, Abram never staggered at the promises of God, hesitated, wavered. 
he stayed bold. The Bible says he, 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 he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Boldness. Say boldness. It's about time some of you stepped up to the plate of boldness. It's about time some of us stepped into the vehicle of boldness. It's about time some of us got an attitude of boldness against the devil, against the sickness, against the debt, against the condition, against the circumstance, like Jesus. Do you know what, what is happening to us? And I'll say this, and, 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 and nobody can refute this. We had a young couple that, was, that traveled with us, uh, Sanjay and Rahisa. And they were a great support to Pastor Debbie and I. By the way, third year, uh, Rahisa is a third year uh, Bible uh, student of my prophetic school, and her husband's coming in. And we've been close for many years, in a sense. And uh, they wanted to travel with us. And I, I was telling them about how rain and God's given me authority over the weather for, for, for urgent situations. And I, I, I gave a few illustrations and I said, for example, the last two years in PE, and you guys know it, it's there, on, uh, the statistics are there, guys, from the time Richard Gray was there. Not, I'm not saying this to be proud, but it's evident, it's, it's recorded on the Word of Faith Christian Center YouTube channel. I know a lot of people are not giving acknowledgement to me, but my words were said. When I went there, I think it was last year or the year before, I'm, I'm not too sure, there was, a, there was a drought. The water level was coming low. So I made, if, if you remember that, I made everybody shout, and I was talking about the shout of God. And I said, we're going to shout and break the demonic strongholds that are holding back the, the rain or the water, whatever. That night... It poured with rain over the catchment areas of PE. Is it coincidental? From the shout, a few hours later, it starts pouring with rain. It saves them. Then I go back again. I think it was this year or last year. I can't remember. This time there's so much ministry. Also, they're talking to me, and I'm asking them about the dams, how full the dams are. Then I ask somebody, I think it was Pastor Richard Crompton, I was talking to him or someone that knew about the weather and I asked them, how does the, the, the rain come and where does it fall? And they said, no, most times, listen to this guys, most time the rain comes around and when it gets to around about PE, that area goes out to sea and it hasn't been, it doesn't come necessarily on the catchment areas or the dams. Okay, and I followed the life of Elijah. Elijah stopped the rain and then he called the rain and it happened the same hour. Imagine three and a half years of no drought. He speaks to the weather and there's a, the, the chariot wheels are almost getting stuck in the mud there. I've, I've had that experience. Of, uh, 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 what started me believing God for that was I had an experience with Pastor Fred Roberts in Stanger. He'd started a church with Dr. James and Megan Fanzel, the mayors of, of Stanga, and the lo one of the local doctors. And the one night, we always used to go uh, on a Wednesday night, have church, and then go to Dr. James Fanzel, who's a medical doctor and the mayor of Stanga, and have supper at the house. And while we were saying grace, uh, James said to Pastor Fred, please can you just pray for rain? Because we... we We've had a drought for about nine months or whatever. And at grace, Pastor Fred prays and he commands the rain to come. <laughs> as it was about 11 o'clock at night, just as Pastor Fred and them were leaving to go home, we hear this massive thunderclap. No sign of rain, no prediction of rain, nothing. Pastor Fred and them drove home in the pouring rain. And I saw that with my own eyes. I've never forgotten that. So I, the first time we shout, then the second time I get up to preach and I say, listen, guys, I want you to work with me. Just if I get one person in the audience that can agree with what I'm about to do. And I told him what had happened. I said, I, I, I spoke to whoever, I forget, I think it was Pastor Richard Crompton who explained the rain. I said, now I'm going to tell the rain. To go when it comes, it must go to your dams. Anyone can agree with me? Some people think it's like uh, crazy. 
And I said it publicly. I prayed it and I decreed it. I said, now in the name of Jesus, I commanded that rain to not go out to sea, but to come onto the dams. First time in 25 years, if I'm not mistaken. Shortly after I left, the rain came. The dams are full. I was telling that to them. Now watch this. So we go to, we go to Doha. We, we, we minister there. Then we go to Spain. And as we leave Spain, it, it's, it's sunny, whatever. As we leave Spain, it rained so hard. <laughs> and it hadn't rained for a long time that they even had to close the park where you see some of my footage on Facebook. I, 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 I think I did about nine messages in that park. And I've just been with the injury. It set me back to post them. Uh, so I'm going to be posting them. So when you see me, in Spain, it's all, most of them were in that park. And they had to close the park because it was too dangerous because of the wind blowing. Then we go to Malta. And uh, I don't know if anything happened in Malta. Oh gosh, I wish my wife was there. She remembers better than me. I can't remember if it rained in Malta or anything like that. Uh, or how the rain works. But then we go back to Doha. And... And the, the, the same, the, the, we sleep the one night, the next morning, listen to this, no prediction of rain whatsoever on the weather report. We go out, we want to do something, and a, a almost a mini hurricane hits us. We were caught in the midst of it. I've got footage of it. And uh, Lauren's husband, Brad, kept saying, we, it hasn't rained like this in five years. The cars were getting stuck. Cars were almost floating already and and i believe it was a prophetic sign of of the of god doing something in the spiritual realm against the forces of darkness it was because when you read isaiah 55 that god says as as the rain comes down from heaven so shall my word be and i believe it was a prophetic attack uh, of manifestation of God against the forces of darkness or else it was the forces of darkness stirring up the weather to try and kill us because we had to ride in that we were caught from the beginning to the end in it I've got the amazing footage of the flooding of cars and 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 whatever we didn't hear a few accidents ourselves it was close we were praying boy in Jesus name and so why am I saying all that I don't know. Uh, I was saying it at the beginning. Um, you you got to believe God's word. That's, I think that's what I'm saying. Believe God's word. And, 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 and be bold. That's, I think that's what I'm saying. Be bold in believing. And, and when it's necessary, call in the, the, the horses and chariots of fire. <laughs> I still believe they're out there. Isaiah 40, <coughs> excuse me, verse 8. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. What's the key? Come to Christ. Keep coming to Jesus. Don't, don't, don't think because you're a Christian, you've been so long, and, you, and this condition has grown, and you're tolerating it. No, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Don't ever give up against a circumstance. You know, I heard a preacher once say, persistence breaks resistance. Through faith and patience or consistency, we inherit the promises. You don't ever give up. Hey, I heard, uh, and just for those of you battling with jobs, do what Pastor Rodney Hart Brown says. You, you, you actually employ yourself in the kingdom of God until you get a, a secular job. Go out every day and tell somebody about Jesus and watch God start paying you. Watch God start opening doors of blessing for you. In fact, we've got first-hand experience of that. Even without knowing that, God said to me, meet my needs and I'll meet your needs. And if, you, if the finances are lacking a bit as well, go and witness. Go and tell others about Jesus. Watch how quickly God starts providing your needs. There's a key to witnessing and soul winning to the provision of God coming in your life. I've said it before. When you meet God's greatest need on earth, which is the salvation of men and women, where God says, I'm not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. God starts meeting your most urgent need. It works every, 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 every time. 
Because God is not mocked. That what you sow, you will reap. <laughs> Jesus said, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Come to me, all you labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Rest is best. <laughs> He's rest. Call on Christ. Romans 10, 13, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And remember the five, the five attributes or the fivefold manifestation of salvation is forgiveness of sin, deliverance from demons, healing of our bodies, soundness and peace, peace of mind and material well-being. That's what salvation encompasses. Whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall receive those five benefits of his salvation. So I've called come to Christ, call on Christ, commit to Christ. Say that with me. I must come to Christ. I must call on Christ. Come on, say it like you mean it. And then say, I commit to Christ. Three C's there, the Lord just gave me. So yes, committing to Christ. Remember John 3 verse 16. It's a simple scripture. This shows you you've got to commit. I'll show you where it shows committing to Christ in this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, there's the commitment, should not perish but have everlasting life. The, the Amplified says it better, more closer to the original. Amplified says it this way. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized. There's the word again, beloved. Dearly prized, dearly, greatly loved. The world that he even gave up his only begotten unique son that whoever believes in. This is what the word believe means to trust in, cling to, rely on. Him shall not perish, come to destruction or be lost in any area of your life, but shall have ever eternal and everlasting life. Let's just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone in this building those that are watching online. And I want to just say in this building and online, if you've never given your life to Jesus or surrendered 100% of your spirit, soul, body, financially, emotionally, intellectually, or of any kind, then today is the day of salvation. Just simply pray this prayer together with me. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you as the lover of my life. And I ask you, forgive me of negligence, of, of neglect, and forgetting your promises. Wash me in the blood that you shed for me at Calvary. I renew my relationship with you. I renew my vows to your promises. I call on you. I come to you and I commit to you and your word in Jesus' name. Therefore, all things will work together for good, not bad, to me and my household in Jesus' name. Amen. And let me just pray a blessing in you. Come on, just, just lift your hands. For a moment, let me pray this word on you, then we'll share communion together. Father, I pray for International Christian Center and the churches and ministries that are under us today. Those that are watching this, Lord, I pray the peace of Christ, nothing missing, nothing broken upon everyone. I pray for recovery. I pray for restitution. I pray for renewal. I pray for restoration. I pray for reformation in everyone's life, every church, God, that is linked to us, every ministry that is submitted to us. God, in the name of Jesus, may we all experience 3 John 2 in our lives on a day-by-day -day basis, that there will be no lack in our lives because you're our shepherd and all your our needs are provided according to your riches and you're not poor. If you be for us, nothing and no one can be against us. Father, and all who we are, all what we have and all what we do, we surrender it to you. That all who you are, all what you have and all what you can do is ours 
for the taking, ours for the receiving, ours for the experiencing. I pray this over everyone in the name and by the blood of Jesus. And Father, I thank you that because Jesus Christ, the living word never changes. Your word and your will never changes, will never be consumed. And even as you said in your word, there's two things you cannot do. You cannot lie and you cannot change. And you said your covenant you will never break, nor alter that which has gone out of your mouth. So we receive the written word, the living word, and the power of the Holy Spirit who resides in us. Therefore we can say, now unto him who is able, we are to do all things super abundantly above what we can dream, expect, or desire according to the power that works in us. And Father, we will continue to renew our minds. We'll continue to feast on the wording. Incline our ears and our eyes to your sayings that we might receive the word and not become like the Pharisees who did wrong not knowing the scriptures and who, who had the rebuke of Jesus saying, Have you not read in the word? Have you not read? You do err not knowing the scriptures. We will not be guilty of that, but we will be Bible-based believers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Thank you for watching. We know you received something encouraging to empower your relationship with Christ. Please take advantage of our other materials by Richard and Deborah. Should you desire to bless and support this ministry, please use the following details to impart your blessing. May the Lord return the favor to you a thousandfold according to Deuteronomy 1 verse 11. Should you be in the vicinity of Peter Marisburg in KZN, you are welcome to attend our church service at International Christian Center, Peter Maritzburg, located at 28 Pilot Road, Epworth. Our times are as follows, at 9 a.m. in the morning. If you have never surrendered your life to Christ or need to recommit to the Lord Jesus, please pray this prayer to God now. Dear God, our Father in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus to be my savior Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins as I ask you to forgive and cleanse me of all of my sins by the power of your shed blood. I receive you as my Savior, Lord and friend. As you make me your child today, thank you again, Father, for the indescribable gift of eternal life in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the Lord lead you to a Bible-based church. Alternatively, Contact us to be of assistance in this important next step of your relationship with Christ. God bless Richard and Deborah Gray.